The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. I would like to introduce a speaker for the last session of the first part, and that's Vincent Cadore, and he'll be talking about transition to BIM for structural design. Vincent has worked, Vincent is employed by Imagineit, that's a BIM service company and BIM consulting firm, and yeah, Vincent worked about four, five, uh, four years in provinces of Ontario and Quebec, and now he is with Imagine Technologies based out of uh, Mississauga. He works with engineering and architecture firms as well as general contracts for both small and large, and has seen firsthand what challenges companies face utilizing and switching to BIM. So my name is Vincent. I work for Imagine It. I've been doing this for quite a few years, implementing BIM technologies in all kinds of companies. Imagine It. We are the large, largest Autodesk reseller in North America. You've probably heard of us before. Um, we do BIM. That's the biggest part of our building division. Services are uh, consulting, implementation, right? training for uh, mostly Autodesk software. You might have noticed this morning uh, one of the main things that's been emphasized throughout these examples is that the I in BIM is the most important thing, right? the information. It's great to have a 3D model, but it's also the information behind it that's very important. Um, and to be able to get that information into the model, you have to use it properly or use whatever software you're using properly. Now I'm going to go through this a bit quick because we want to get to the questions at the end. So what is driving the transition to BIM? Well, we already talked about this uh, this morning. There's a lot of inefficiencies in the construction industry, so that's part of what's driving it. We want to make it more efficient. Other things that we overhear, for example, we are changing because our competitor is using it, and we heard it's better than our current method. Right? That's one one reason you might want to switch. Um, some other people switch because basically they have to; otherwise, they're going to stop getting work. Maybe you want to make your company better, make it more efficient, right? That's a good motivation. Make more money at the end of the day by doing the same work. And some companies are having trouble attracting talent if they don't use BIM. So to be quite honest, if you're not using BIM, I probably won't work for your company. <laughs> so that's one of, the, one of the real reasons of using BIM as well. Um, Right. The last one here, there's no way we could have done this using 2D CAD. You're probably hearing this over and over again, and we just saw an example of projects that were done in 2D CAD back in the day. Um, with great difficulty, it would be a lot easier today with the tools we have. Another big reason, especially for uh, general contractors, is that the, the owners are requiring BIM, right? If you're not, you're not doing the project in BIM, they just won't give you the work. Uh, and why are they requiring it? You're coming in at least 10% lower than the budget that was initially planned for that project. And there's already reports using IPD or integra integrated project delivery that this is uh, even down to 20% lower than the projected budget. 
and why? Well, conflicts are resolved in the virtual environment before you get to the construction site, so it's pretty easy to see where you can save money. We even talked about prefabrication. Things can be done ahead of time with great precision. Um, this here list read construction data. Also, McGraw Hill was uh, cited earlier. I think a recent stat from last week, their updated data, is that 76% of general contractors now in North America are using BIM in some way, either in whole or in part. So uh, BIM is definitely here. Now the question is, how can you implement it in your, in your own company? So one of the advantages as well of switching to BIM is you can have an analytical model at the same time as you have your, your uh, geometric model which is great to be able to analyze the building ahead of time, prevent problems. So this is really the, the meat of uh, the subject here. We have to make it very clear that BIM is not just a piece of software, it's a process change and a cultural change within the company. And this has very important, or, um, yeah, very important implications. So it's not a piece of software, it's a process. You've seen this graph before, most likely. The one in red is the traditional design process. Every time we switch over, send the information to the next party, information is lost and we kind of have to rethink, uh, figure things out again. Whereas with BIM, this is a, a perfect scenario of BIM. There's always a bit of loss because it's still an imperfect system, but it is a lot better than the traditional process in getting the information across from uh, across disciplines. So there's a lot of obstacles as well to adopting BIM. We're not going to hide it. Um, most of them are simply inadequate training. People start off, they don't get the training, and then they find it too hard, so they quit. Sometimes it's the cost of the software, although that's becoming less and less of an issue these days. Um, senior management buy-in. Right? If the people directing the company don't buy in on the idea, it's probably going to fail. And also the cost of uh, hardware upgrades, this is sometimes an issue because BIM does require potentially more hardware. So I don't, meant to, don't mean to offend anybody with this, uh, this little graphic here, but this does create roadblocks. So if you're really sticking to your guns on the old processes, obviously it's going to be hard to switch to the new BIM method. But there are a lot of benefits to BIM. So as we've seen in the examples, better coordination, improved productivity, better communication. Now, about this point of better communication, the software doesn't replace the people, so you can't, you can't expect uh, whatever BIM software you're using to replace your people. You have to emphasize that they must communicate better. That's why it's a process change. Also, improved quality control, we've seen that already. So, there you go. You don't want to get left in the dust probably a good idea to start switching to BIM. Here's just a couple of images. Again, this is a perfect scenario, the one on the right. It might not exactly happen like this, we all know, but the idea is BIM is a cultural change. You have to start communicating and collaborating better with the people, either within your own firm and with the ones collaborating with you on the project. All right, so there's many challenges. I'll just go over them real quick because I want to focus on not the challenges, but the way to actually succeed in doing this. So for example, what is BIM? Is it achievable? Is it real? We've seen this morning very clearly. Yes, it is. Um, it's, not, it's not that new anymore, right? It's been around for a while. Uh, process challenges, how do I incorporate it into my day-to-day -day business? Those types of questions, as well as how do I maintain the good people I have here in the last section. All right, so we need a plan. This is a good quote to remember. He who fails to plan is planning to fail by Winston Churchill. So how do we create a plan for this? Why a structured approach? All right, many reasons we want to have a plan. We want to eliminate the risk of running into a roadblock. Um, you, you want to be able to repeat it the next time as well. You do the next project. So there's many reasons you want to have a plan. All right, so reasons it could fail. 
improper planning, no support from the executives, unrealistic goals, um, to a pilot project that is too complicated, or just misunderstanding what BIM is, right? Thinking that it's a piece of software and just expecting to buy a piece of software and having it do the work for you. So this is the general uh, implementation plan that we use at Imagine It. We start by defining what the plan will be, obviously, and we are consultants in this area, so obviously we're going to recommend that you have an experienced consultant, whether it's, it's us or somebody else that really knows what BIM is about, right? Get the help or at least the contact, so when you run into issues, you can ask them for help. So the definition part, make sure everybody in the company that has a say in buying the software and signing the, the purchase orders are on board, all the stakeholders. Uh, have the plan completed. Select a very good team from the start. If you select people that are diehard AutoCAD users, it's probably not going to work. So once we get into the development phase, you want to start creating standards for your company. right? Uh, no matter what piece of software you're using for BIM, you're still going to need standards. And then you want to have the right training for the, the people on your pilot project. And you've probably seen this going around. If you haven't used any BIM software yet, most of these are object-based. It's not just lines anymore, so you have to create your own library and content. More and more of it is online and already available, but you'll still have to research it, find it, put it in your library, make sure it works properly. All right, so the pilot project. Now, I already mentioned that you want to select a pilot project that is not overly complex. Right? Uh, this will help you. For example, if, you, if you're used to doing schools and you pick a hospital project as your first pilot project, probably not a good idea. You want to select something you're very used to so you can benchmark yourself against what you already know versus your new BIM method. And production, this is for larger companies. So once you've gone through these three stages, sorry, once you've gone through these three stages, you want to sit back, right? Learn uh, or observe what you've learned, write it down, make your own internal standards to be able to rinse and repeat for the next projects. Because really this is a whole iterative, iterative process. You keep making it better over time. So here's a summary of what we've talked about. Executive buy-in, very important. The right pilot project, very important as well. You don't want it to be overly complex. You want to select something that's reasonable. Um, maybe you won't be able to hit all these bullet points for your first pilot project, but try and hit as many as you can. Maybe uh, you know, having a project without a tight deadline is impossible, but one that's a smaller scale, probably feasible. Team selection, select the right people, people that are motivated to change the BIM. And obviously, well, it goes without saying that you want to plan this out properly. Establish the corporate BIM standards, get your templates done. A lot of these softwares use templates similar to what you were using in AutoCAD before, but for a BIM model. And get the proper hardware. <clears throat> I have seen big issues because the executives won't buy the proper hardware to run the software. And it seems like a small issue, but if they're wasting 25% of their time waiting after the hardware or after their software, because the little thing is going like this on the screen, right, the project's not going to go very well. Everybody's going to get frustrated. And just go back to this slide. Very important to understand the difference between LAN and WAN, local area network and wide area network. These BIM softwares are very data intensive. You can't just use it over the internet like what you've been used with AutoCAD. It requires a different setup to be able to work, on, like was mentioned on the central file with somebody across the world. All right, and this, I, I, I always highlight this, don't ever fall back to CAD. It shouldn't be an option because if you fall back to CAD as a crutch, you're not going to learn how to use BIM properly and it's always going to be the same story at every project. You start off on BIM and then fall back to CAD. Remember it's not drafting, it's modeling. You're putting information into a virtual building model. 
and for the um, stakeholders and the people who make the standards within the company, understand that your plans won't look 100% like they did in AutoCAD. It is possible to, to do it, but in the new method, there's always these points to consider. Should I go all the way to that level of detail? It might take me a lot more effort than it did in CAD for not much benefit. So think about that before you, you do that. All right, so project kickoff meetings, as you can talk about. So that, that completes it for my, my main part. And I think what I'll do is I'll leave the rest for questions. We've already seen enough examples this morning of how BIM is implemented. Thank you. Thanks.